Now that I have the case mostly built, I can start putting the parts in. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a link to the first video in this series in the description. To lift the capacitors up a little bit and also pad them from the bottom, I'm sliding in a piece of rubber and then I'll put that bracket that I made on and screw that down as well. And I have a little bit of glue on the threads of this bolt to lock it in place. I like to use these terminal blocks to join the wires together at critical points. And once again, I'm screwing it down to the bottom panel to hold it in place. I also made a piece of rubber to go underneath the transformer to pad that. And I made one for the top to go underneath that steel plate that holds the transformer down. This is another circuit board that I designed and made. The side that I'm soldering right now is the power distribution. And the other side that's a lot more complex is the soft start. And a soft start limits inrush current when you first turn on the amplifier. And that's important when you have these big capacitors to charge up. These two wires are coming from the transformer and they connect to the output of the soft start. And with the temporary power cord connected, I can plug it in and see what happens. And luckily nothing bad, but I need to make sure that I have the correct voltage at these terminals to supply the amplifiers. This transformer puts out 104 volts AC, and after it's rectified, that works out to around 147 volts DC. And of course the supply is split, so it's gonna be around 73 and a half volts on each side. So the next step is to get one of my amplifier boards and put it in place and actually try it out. And the board is designed so that the screws that hold the transistors down also hold the board down, except for the smaller ones that also get bolted down to the bottom plate. For those, the screw goes right through the hole. Now, before I hook this up, I wanna make sure that the power supply is drained. I wanna get a shock. And the first thing that you need to do after you get an amplifier like this put in place is adjust the idle current or at least check it to make sure that it's not too high. And here I've got around 11 millivolts across that 0.3 ohm resistor. So that makes the idle current for each transistor around 35 milliamps. And since I'll be using this amplifier only for subwoofers, there's no need of going any higher. But because I had so many comments in the last video about the glue that I used to hold the heat sinks in place, I thought I would do a little bit of a test here. And for that test, I'm gonna crank up the idle current so it's a lot higher, and that way everything will heat up a lot faster. And I'll check the temperature of the bottom plate where the transistors are attached, and I'll compare that to the heat sink that's directly behind. And I'm starting with the app that's been turned off and sitting cold for about an hour. And you can see that there's some lag between the bottom plate and the heat sink directly behind, but it's only by a degree or two and it quickly catches up. The fact is that the glue that I use to help fill the gap between the heat sink and the bottom plate is very thin. It's a very thin layer. And the main thing that it's doing is filling the air gap between the bottom plate and the heat sink itself. And here I've left it on for about an hour and let it heat up to where it's gonna be. And you can see that even at that high idle current, it's not really getting that hot and the heat has no problem reaching those heat sinks that are glued on. Next thing I need to do is work on the back panel. And once again, I'm making this from 1 8 inch thick aluminum. And here I'm drilling the holes for the input and output connectors. Each channel will have one RCA input jack, and for output I'm using banana jacks rather than binding posts because I always use banana plugs to connect the speakers. A little bit more complex is the hole for the AC input. The one I have has rounded corners, and to get those rounded corners, I'm gonna start with a small hole and then ream that out to the line using the step drill. Then I can cut out the rest with the jigsaw, and file it the rest of the way so that the jack fits in there. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to give this the same treatment as I did on the top cover with the random orbit sander and a 120 grit disc. And then I'm using the toner transfer method to label the inputs and outputs on the back panel. The idea here is that it will work very similar to the way I made the circuit board before. I'll iron it on and then I'll soak the paper off. But in this instance, I think that the aluminum was a little bit too rough. And while I was ironing the last piece on, it actually came off. And so I figured I might as well do that with the other two as well. It's not exactly the way I wanted it to look, but it's pretty good for the back panel, I think. I can always redo it when I get back to the project again. With the back panel done, I can get it installed and also get the jacks put in and everything wired up. I put in the other three amp boards and I got those connected as well and tested and made sure everything was working properly. And then I brought it down to my listening room and connected it to the subwoofers. And I'm putting this project on hold, at least for a little while. I'm missing a couple of connectors and I'm waiting until those come in. And also I haven't settled on a design for the front panel yet. And so I need to figure that out before I proceed. But in the meantime, the amp does work and it works perfectly, so I'll be using it. 